Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Prickly Hedgehog, your host. Thanks for tuning in again for another midweek update on the things going on in DCS World. We've been getting pretty good updates midweek. Unfortunately, today is a large amount of bad news, as you can tell from the title and the opening sequence there. The supercarrier has been torpedoed for now. No! Unfortunately, and the... Reality was, I did hint last week that there was a possibility, always a possibility, that something would go wrong and <laughs> the module would not be released. Now, I'm, I'm laughing because, um, not because I think it's funny, but I'm laughing because I'm, I'm frustrated and disappointed, like probably most of you. Uh, it is to be expected in a very complex environment like this that developers are going to run into issues that they can't resolve even against their own timelines and things get pushed out that's just the nature of the beast unfortunately and those of you like me that have been with dcs and eagle dynamics for a goodly number of years know full well that uh, a lot of these modules have been in uh, taken years to get into the game and just when you think everything's up and running they go ahead and do a switcheroo and other things change i mean the game has seen some incredible development over the last probably two to three years uh, particularly with the introduction of a improved graphics model and then also modules like the f-18 which has probably been outside of um, the a10c one of the more um, how would you say complex and dynamic modules the fact that we can even land on a carrier as it stands right now and take off and launch and do all those cool things is pretty phenomenal but we were promised a pretty decent update, a very decent module, and unfortunately they could not deliver. Now, uh, the announcement came early this morning or late last night, depending on where you live in the world, but uh, the COO of Eagle Dynamics, Kate Peradirko, said basically we've been working hard towards the announcement release date of April 15th, but sadly we were unable to work through all the issues in order to ensure a satisfactory early release. Now, the main no-go for her, she says, and I'm sure for you too, she says, now again, this is a little bit subjective, but it's nice wishful thinking, is that multiplayer behavior, which still suffers from certain non-game breaker bugs, um, which are confirmed on Saturday, uh, were confirmed on Saturday, April 11th. They, she doesn't say what these are. Obviously, they were having issues getting it to run properly in the multiplayer environment. Now, um... So she then she continues, I'll just finish the sentence, but we have a new plan and we will be working overtime to bring you this long awaited product. So there's good news there. It's not like they, they wanted this to happen or anything silly like that. This is no internal sabotage. Um, a lot of people have complained and are upset. Now she says she actively follows the threads, in particular this April 15th, 2020, and she understands how disappointed we are and she's confident that uh, you know multiplayer needs a little bit more love. Now some people on some of the other forums I've seen um, and other platforms have indicated, well, okay, it wasn't working in multiplayer, why can't we have it in the single player? And I think it's a fair question. I don't know the answer to that, to be honest, and maybe some you know, developers or programmers or people that are more informed on this subject than I am can help out, but I don't know if that's necessarily feasible. I don't know if you can uh, continue to you know, work on the module independently. I don't know how the game functions, and maybe that's uh, not a question that can be answered by people who aren't familiar with the way the game engine works uh, I know for me that multiplayer has been a bit of a disaster trying to um, even with a low ping rate I've had all sorts of issues with this the, the, the game lagging not being playable you're on the ground and it's just uh, it's just running like a chloroform snail it's impossible to uh, to even play the game so we end up just connecting and just going back to the single player because at least it runs and functions so, uh, yeah, so my multiplayer experience at this time, even though it's in its infancy, hasn't been all that positive, at least in the um, open beta environment, which a lot, of, a lot of the servers are in right now. So, okay, so that being said, uh, I know you all have opinions and, um, you know, thoughts, so feel free to share them in the comments below. I uh, look forward to what you have to say. Let's move on to things that are progressing still nicely and that is uh, one of the, one of them is the f-18c uh, hornet of course which is looking lovely right now i had a little play with it last night was flying doing some um, recoveries on the deck of the aircraft carrier as it stands which was fun uh, 
and they are well let's have a look they've got four fleur pointing modes which were have come out recently and uh, apparently it was a, a substantial task to develop so they prepared a bug fix update for this uh, this week and they're working to deliver the following features by the end of april completion of the lightning targeting pod pod excuse me dynamic launch zones and auto loft mode for jdam air to ground radar real beam ground map cool slam air to surface missile during the spring and summer we plan to work on a range of flight model enhancements that include automatic carrier landing system cool autopilot modes and about 30 related features and issues so it's still a fairly comprehensive list of bits and pieces uh, as for the f-16 well the last two months they have been focusing on bug fixing and small improvements new developer joined us recently as working on the agm 65d Maver maverick air to surface missile which we hope will be delivered by the end of april that'll add some uh, um, extra zing to the f-16 which is cool give it another cas roll uh, we will be increasing our efforts on the navigation system starting in May. Improvements will include the update of the steer point system, permitting in-game mission planning, and Cursor Zero will also be added. I'm not sure what Cursor Zero means, but anyway. Um, our general roadmap, roadmap hasn't changed substantially since February 20th, except for the supercarrier, I might add. But however, KA-50 cockpit update was delivered. The FW-190A8 Anton was released out of early access. Yep, new damage model is progressing well and will be presented to you to you in the near future. Enhanced uh, aircraft AI was added to active phase development. That needs to occur, which is, uh, I'm pleased about that. Uh, I got some, I had some thoughts recently about some videos I was trying to bring to you and I just noticed... Um, just the way that the AI functions in the game. So hopefully we can get some improvement there. But anyway, that's the whole separate video. A10C2, A, excuse me, A10C2 moved to active phase of development. Cool. Lighting and terrain improvements were pushed back a bit. Hmm, no surprise. Okay. Uh, disappointing, but never mind. Enhanced asset pack supercarrier and helicopter multi-crew now have deadlines. All right. Hornet received its list, final list of features to be delivered this year, but this is a topic of a future update. Okay. So current projects in active development phase here we are these are sort of broad terms that they use and you'll see them as near term long term and mid term so here we go um dcs core 2.5.6 preparation for the stable release uh, stable release frames per second improvement hopefully yes that would be very very helpful damage modeling for world war ii aircraft nice weapon improvement missile dynamics new ai new unit, units excuse me final aim 120b dynamics to be released very soon aim 120c to follow cool voice chat that's a um, that's going to be a mid to long term thing long term is the dynamic campaign we know about that long term enhanced aircraft artificial intelligence that's uh that needs to happen like i said uh near term here's another little update then dcx dcx gosh i can't say it dcs graphics engine sorry oh had a long meeting this morning i'm actually tired special effects update uh multi-threading so near near term sorry special effects update uh, long-term multi-threading that needs to happen soon i think this would solve a lot of their issues to be honest i don't know why they have put that back so far why that's in the long term needs to be one of their primary focuses for the graph i think it would to be honest i think this would solve a lot of their issues in terms of uh making the game work um it's, everybody has known this for a long time that the game engine does not take advantage of you know multi-core processes very well so we have most of us you know you can have as big a flipping computer as you like and the game will not run well um under certain load uh, under certain environmental conditions when you have a lot of objects in the air uh if you're around air bases and things like that it's just the architecture is not being exploited properly by the software and i don't know why they have pushed that back maybe it's a big problem they can't solve and it's just on the too hard basket for now i don't know i don't want to be critical of, of eagle dynamics here and and say they don't know what they're doing they, they know what they're doing it's just it's a matter of tasking and being able to complete those things um and, and it could also be the fact that it's a very complex thing that they have to work with but in my opinion that needs to come more to the forefront but um you know that's the challenge of i guess operating a company of this nature and and task prioritization based on all the other things you have going on anyway 
sorry, little rant there. Long-term Vulkan API integration, long-term new Fleur engine. Okay, cool. Uh, so these assets uh, came out of, what do we got here? Modules, April 2020, Wibble 2 asset pack has been updated or is going to be updated. April, May, the super carrier. So we talked about that already. Hopefully it's April, but I, I suspect it may be May. And who knows? I mean, if they can't solve this multiplayer problem, which I, I think is a big one right now for them, uh, maybe it gets pushed back even further. I hope not. But, you know, again, give me your thoughts on that. May 2020, Huey multi-crew. Okay, cool. Quarter 2 of 2020, the Thunderbolt uh, P47. Quarters 2 and 3, 2020, the um, channel early access. Okay, cool. Midterm, Mariana Island. So we were way out for that yet. December 2020, we're looking at the Hornet out of early access. Cool. Uh, mid to long term, the F-16 Viper. And there are no surprises there. Midterm, modern air combat. Midterm, the Warthog 2. And midterm, the Mi-24P Hind, which I'm very much looking forward to. Can't wait to see that in action. That's going to be an exciting addition to the game. Uh, probably one of the more exciting additions for a while for our woolly bird friends. Um, so near term, we have uh, the final list of tasks to be done before we share it in DCS and expect delivery in less than six months. This gives you kind of a broad overview of how these uh, this terminology is used. Midterm, we have, a f and you can see, six months for, for near term. And that gives you an idea of how, how you know complex these projects are and how long it's going to take them to implement. So it's not surprising when something doesn't quite work out, they, when things get pushed back. All right, midterm, nine months, basically, is what we're talking here. Long term, initial list of tasks, but uh, a lot to add and do not have exact expectations. Some long term tasks can be delivered partially in iterations or iterations. Um, some need to be fully completed. So there are some passive development phase uh, projects uh, waiting for a 3D delivery or model delivery, developers allocation, reference gathering stage, or one of the current active projects to be finished first. This includes the following. DCS core, damage modeling for modern aircraft, airfield, airfield ATC, which I think is going to be a, add a lot to the multi uh, or the immersion factor of the game, but certainly would be useful for a multiplayer too, probably. The graphics engine, we're looking at terrain lighting, terrain improvement, clouds. This They're going to start on this again in May. That's cool. I don't think they can do a lot of this stuff without having their uh, multi-threading stuff sorted out, though, but... We'll see. Uh, weather update, cool. Full air to ground radar, and yeah, the modules, the Yak 52 release, K50 Black Shark 3, cool. Mosquito, very much excited for the Mosquito, uh, the Mark 6 Mosquito, that is. And Eagle Dynamics has four items in early access. Yeah, we know about this. This is the Viper, the Hornet, the Yak 52, and the World War II asset pack. So. They plan to deliver all products out of early access this year. However, the F-16 is going to stay in, in early access until quarter 2021. Probably not a surprise there. They'll keep us updated. I guess it depends on how some of these other projects come to, you know, uh, fruition. Whew. That was a long bit of information, and I appreciate you guys staying tuned in for me. Um, give me your thoughts on this. Um, we'll try to keep it civil. I know I'm disappointed. Uh, very disappointed actually that this uh, module the super carrier is not available just yet hopefully it's uh, later this month more likely it'll be may that's just my prediction uh because i'm being conservative um i am worried about the fact that there's an issue with the multiplayer right now that they are struggling with but this is also the nature of development you know you you move one thing work on something uh, and that changes other things that you didn't expect or it doesn't you know just doesn't come quite right and now you're pointing out some other fires <laughs> uh you know all of these things have a cumulative effect on on you know delivery of of timelines so so disappointing uh not un unexpected given the nature of this game and and the nature of development in it and the nature of its complexity but again uh still kind of sucks so i guess we have to live with it Hopefully it comes through sooner than later. I wish them all the best. I do, because I want to see this module. I think it's fantastic. It's going to be a welcome addition to the game and leave a very, very interesting mark on the flight simulator genre uh, just because there's nobody else doing anything quite like it. So it's a very, very ambitious project. I'm going to give them credit for that. All of their full fidelity aircraft are very, very complex. Uh, it could require a lot of study, a lot of learning. 
On that basis too, before we finish and wrap up here, because that's where we're coming to the end of the video, uh, I've been watching a lot of the Fighter Pilot podcast uh, videos where um, uh, Jello goes through and um, talks about some videos that he has pulled off the internet in terms of uh, the F-18 and other aircraft videos as well, but also uh, aircraft carrier landings. Really, really informative, very, very interesting. I found it very, very useful for my own DCS uh, knowledge about what's actually going on. And that was something I was hoping to talk to you about today with regards to the supercarrier and that, that flight deck. I learned some really interesting stuff that I wanted to share and I was so excited about it. But, like as I said at the very beginning, the, the project has been torpedoed for now. So that'll do, we'll wrap it up. I really appreciate you guys listening, tuning in every week bi-weekly or whatever depending on how things go this has been a long enough video so i will wrap it up guys ladies thanks for tuning in again um, i hope your flying goes well and uh stay safe out there carry on flying we'll see you around prickly hedgehog out <laughs>